Are you tired of your flowers drying up, wilting, sitting in brown, nasty water, and you just got them yesterday? Today, I'm going to show you how to take care of that problem. I'm going to go over a couple tips and tricks, which are really not anything that are special. It's just something that you should already be doing, but I'm assuming you're watching this video because nobody's explained this to you, which means you're probably not getting your flowers from a good florist. So ultimately you should be trying to go to a good florist or go buy your own products. And I'm gonna talk about them here in this video. Now for these tricks to work, you're actually gonna to have to do something. It's a requirement. This isn't one of those things you just watch me and in the background your, your flowers are gonna come back to life. These flowers are away from the plant. They have been cut from the plant. They're not going to grow just the way like a window plant would that's already got a system like a root system, like a, a life support system that's going to keep it alive. These flowers are basically at the mercy of what's in the water. So first thing is you're going to want to make sure you've got some food in that water. If you haven't gotten any from the flower shop, a good idea is to go somewhere like Michael's or really any flower shop should carry it. Should. Good florists will carry it. It all depends what kind of food they have. I know at our shop we have them in a big bucket powder that we just scoop. But florists are more willing to do that. If you ask them, if you say, hey, can I get some extra food? We'll say, hey, you know what you're doing? That's a good idea. We'll give you a little bit extra. And there's a couple other products that we're going to throw in there, but with the water, they got to drink. That's the biggest thing. If you don't have your flowers sitting in clean water, you're going to get bacteria. You're going to get like algae and brown stuff, right? It's going to become a cesspool in your vase, and your vase is trying to drink that swampy water, like radioactive toxic waste, going to kill your flowers fast. So the trick to that is adding a couple drops of bleach. If you got a little eyedropper, if you have a steady enough hand, maybe you could put a couple, like a cap full of bleach. That's going to help stop bacteria growth in your base. And that way your plants can be drinking fresh water. Think about it. You yourself would not go to a mud puddle and scoop up a glass and start drinking it. It would make you very sick and you'd probably start hunching over and wilting. Something to consider. Another topic I wanted to talk about was the idea of talking to your plant or giving them some type of music or something. I've heard that it helps. I've seen some plants do decent with it, but that's not going to keep your cut flowers around long enough. Screaming at them is not going to help. Although I think heavy metal has some type of effect. Those are plants. We're talking about cut flowers. Now, a couple of products you can use if you know where to get them. Um, I want to see you can order them online, but they are preserving products. One of them that we use is called Finishing Touch. It's a spray that seals the petals on your flowers. It helps hydrate them and seal them with like a wax barrier. That way they stay hydrated, so to speak. They're not going to dry out. With flowers, they're going to breathe from the petals and the leaves. You don't want to spray this product on the leaves. It's not bad. These products are designed for the blooms. You want to see the flowers at the top. When this product is added, it stops the flowers from being able to perspire moisture from the petals too fast. Ideally, when you're getting your flowers, they should have been very hydrated to begin with. That's on the florist to hydrate their flowers for you. So you get them in a nice, lively arrangement. When the product is used, it will keep the flowers alive much longer. Another trick with that is because they drink from the stem. You don't want them in that swamp water. You want to cut about a half an inch to an inch and a half, maybe two inches, depending how tall your base is. You want to take a little bit off the stem every couple days on an angle, and that will help keep the ends of the stems from rotting, because they will rot in neutral water, especially with sunlight. So when you cut them, obviously rinse your base out, put some fresh water, scoop of food, maybe a drop or two of bleach. The bleach will help to keep the bacteria down. And while you're taking your flowers out, if your florist did not strip the stems of your flowers, now would be a great time to pull those extra leaves or take a straight knife, cut what's left of those leaves. So that way the leaves are not sitting in the water with the stems. Because the leaves are prone to becoming bacteria. They create cesspools. It's usually why most bases get horribly nasty in, in a couple days. Things like flower food are not really anything too specific you have to worry about. Food is food when it comes to flowers. It's not like our diets where we have junk food and healthy food and vegan food. It's not anything like that. I mean, it's not like poor quality flower food is going to be deemed as junk food. But it's the same stuff, just cheaper. So, something to keep in mind. Now, there are certain types of flowers that can require 
a little exceptional type of treatment. Things like baby's breath, if you get them fresh from a grower. If, if you go to a vendor, hopefully your vendor is taking care of them the right way. If they get them too fresh and haven't had a chance to do something to them, baby's breath, you'll notice the first time you open it up, it's going to smell like gym shoes from a football player who's had them in their locker the whole season. You're going to want to use bleach. Now, when you use bleach for your vases, you're just putting a drop or two, maybe a drop or two, and that's going to help slow the bacterial growth. When you start using bleach for your baby's breath, the whole point is that it's drinking it up and that bleach is neutralizing the smell of gym shoes. The best way to do that is to go a little heavy. Get you a five gallon bucket or something equivalent, fill it maybe about halfway full and put about a cup of bleach, if maybe not more, in the water because baby's breath is pretty resilient to stuff. Even if it dries out, it for the most part still looks pretty decent. Another type of flower is tulips, and everybody loves their tulips. The problem with tulips are, is after a little while, they start to wilt over. Um, tulips themselves in general are pretty stubborn, I guess. I, I'm trying to think of the word, and it's escaping me right now. They don't do the same thing most other flowers do. In a vase, if you cut them to keep them with fresh water, they're going to actually start growing a little bit. Tulips act a little different. They act kind of like they're still connected to the root system, like they're still in the dirt. But nonetheless, with tulips, when they start wilting, not really wilting, but leaning, a good way to keep your tulips standing straight up is to use a shot of vodka. It acts to them the way Viagra does etc etc so you're going to use about a shot of vodka you're going to use an airplane bottle it's for the flowers it's not for you if you're not old enough to get something like that then again just go ahead and try cutting them just a little bit they will lean towards the sunlight for the most part so try to rotate your vase to see if they can go another way obviously don't set your flowers right in the window though because the sunlight will make them over bloom they'll be too hot your flowers won't last just put them in a neutral place in the house where a little bit of light is getting to them and they can lean their way back. That is if you're not old enough or don't have the means of getting vodka at the moment. Another type of flower is going to be snapdragons. Snapdragons are very subject to leaning towards the light as well. Similar to tulips, similar to gladiolas, a couple different flowers. They like to lean towards the light, especially like greens like Bells of Ireland will always lean towards the light. You might set them in one day in an arrangement and they'll be like this and the next day they'll start curling and going a certain way. It's just the way it is. Plants love light. That's another source of energy for them. So they're going to do that. One way to prevent your snapdragons from curling over too far and helping them stay straight is using a little shot of antifreeze. It has a sweet quality to them and they enjoy the sweetness. So that is another tip. Aside from that, there are other flowers. I will post more on other videos that throw a little extra tidbits in. I'm not going to give you guys everything the first time. Those are some pretty solid tips that you can use to help keep your flowers going longer. Change your water every couple days, three days at the most. Put a couple drops of bleach or like I said, if you don't have a drop or use a cap and just eyeball it. You know, just a little bit will go a long way. Make sure you have some type of flower food. If you have no flower food whatsoever and your florist is a horrible florist, which is, like I said, probably why you're watching this video, your next best option is Epsom salt. And you'll use one tablespoon per gallon of water. Best way to do that is just get you an old milk jug, fill it up with water, and put one tablespoon in or teaspoon. Teaspoon, tablespoon, tablespoon. We'll go with tablespoon. Add one tablespoon, mix it up, use that water to fill your base. Obviously you don't have to put the whole gallon, but that extra what's left you can use the next time you rinse the base. If you do these things, your flowers should last you up to a week if not longer. One of my last little secret tips I'm going to go ahead and give you is kind of an insider secret that I've learned very recently. I think I've only seen one other person on YouTube talk about this and this was years ago. You want to get your flowers when you receive them. Take them out of your vase and actually submerge them in water. Don't shove them in water. Take your time. Let them sit down in the water till they're bubbling, right? Let them sit there for about 10 to 15 minutes. And a lot of you are probably going to say, that sounds crazy. Why would I ever do that? That sounds like a horrible idea. The idea here is that you will really hydrate everything with the flowers. You got to think about it. They can handle it when it rains outside. The only difference is you're not throwing water at them the way the sky does. You're softly submerging them in the water 
so they're not getting damaged they're actually hydrating better than what they would just by sitting in a vase so go ahead and give that a shot about 10-15 minutes take them out put them back into your vase with fresh water and food drop a bleach or two and then any water that drips off best thing you can do is just put some paper towel under if you know that your florist is not using a sealing product like crowning glory or finishing touch and i'm sure there's a few other ones if you're if you know that your florist is not using that regularly you ex you, you receive flowers from them or you buy flowers from them and they don't last only but two or three days that's a good telltale that they're not using it. So when that happens, that's when you want to submerge your flowers. If they're using a product like that, you don't want to do that. It's kind of hard to know, and most of the time they're not going to tell you. And I don't recommend calling your florist to ask them about this because they're probably going to be completely confused and they're probably going to advise you not to do it. So something to try out. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and make a video coming up soon to just explain how that whole process works in a little bit more depth. And I will actually do it myself. I'll buy a pack of daisies because daisies have really thin petals and they like to fall off very often as they are more surface area. They dry out faster. So I'm going to show you how all that works in another video coming up. If this video has helped you out at all, please give me a thumbs up so that I know I'm doing something good for you guys. If you want to see more videos with more tips uh, on insider secrets and trades from the florist industry, uh, go ahead and subscribe to my videos and then hit the bell icon to make sure that you're notified about every new video I come out with. I'm coming out with the videos every couple of days to a week or so and then if you have any questions anything you'd like me to cover in another video go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below thank you guys for watching we'll see you on the next